a nasty ghoul and a big scary scream. We're just in time for January and another episode of Behind the DM Screen. Bleh. This time I'll be covering some of my personal thoughts and some basic exposition on the undead. Where they come from, what you can do with them, maybe even what to think of them. Again, this isn't direct or specific to any setting or rule set, just what I personally do with them and want to share with you. First off, as a DM, I like to give Undead three universal qualities as a creature type. First, their physical needs. Undead don't need to eat, breathe, or sleep. Undead don't respect constitution in that they don't get tired and they can't be poisoned. Undead also can use 100% of their body's strength 100% of the time, until their bodies physically destroy themselves. The other interesting quality I give Undead is something called Astral Sight. I actually got this idea from Hackmasters, but what Astral Sight is, is the ability to see the world in a lucid, monochromatic dream state, where no light is needed, and a creature sees the world as it physically and spiritually exists. Inanimate objects just are, but entities with soul shine with light and perceivable color. I say astral because I give this to a host of other paranormal creatures, and it isn't necessarily exclusive to undead. Second, all undead are destroyed by sunlight. Zombies, skeleton, ghouls, lich, vampires, they're all double killed by direct sunlight and will burst into flames before being reduced to ash and smoke. This is such a universal weakness that even undead that normally lack any sort of survival instinct, like zombies and their skeletons, will still make the effort to bury themselves just before the dawn comes. Now there's a few exceptions, there always are. Ghosts or other ethereal types of undead simply shift planes when exposed to sunlight, and then shift back into the physical world when it's nighttime. This is because the ghost itself is not its actual physical form, and thus no damage done to it is meaningful unless it's done to its actual corpse. Remember, ghosts are puzzles, not encounters. The other exception is evil clerics, evil druids, and evil priests who can cast protection from daylight on their undead minions. Now, this is a homebrew spell, first level abjuration, to be specific. So, if you don't want that, uh, don't tell your DM. I'm not your dad. Also, pro gamer tip, if you're playing a modern fantasy game, this kind of thing scales up. You can apply the same radiant damage the sun does to UV lamp lights and make the lives of urban undead even more miserable. Nothing clears a clogged room full of motionless corpses standing side by side, shoulder to shoulder, quite like erratically shaking a UV spotlight at them. Modern solutions to paranormal problems. This is kind of a second and a half point, but all undead also have a general fear, disgust, or revulsion towards specific religious items iconography, and special reagents. Mileage varies on this so much I can't cover it all, but there's a lot to choose from. Crosses, running water, salt, silver, certain kinds of wood, the list goes on. It's a very cultural, ambiguous kind of trait. I'm partial to salt, rivers, rain, and tree nuts myself. Undead are allergic to nuts. Don't give a vampire nuts. The third and final trait, all undead produce miasma. Now, miasma comes from a ye olde medical theory that disease was contracted and spread through the inhalation of bad vapors or bad air. That the noxious fumes given off by rotting material was the source of sickness. So, yeah, yeah, obviously I would give that to undead. More importantly, I also added it as a way to better visualize and materialize the concept of negative energy and why undead are tangibly and spiritually evil. So let's talk about miasma for a bit and by proxy why undead are always evil. So miasma. Miasma is a type of magical pollution. It takes the form of an invisible gas at low concentrations, but in large quantities it's visible as an Inuyasha-style purple mist. <laughs> miasma is the physical manifestation of spiritual negativity in nature. So in other words, it's entropic and it contributes to the heat death of the world and the universe it resides in. 
but on a local level that translates into things like dense cloud coverage, constant rain or snow, cold biting winds, vegetation withering or refusing to grow, people becoming sick easier, and it can even make the nights come quicker and last longer. This is magic after all. Your allegories can be literal and physical. It also reanimates corpses saturated in it, making more undead, doubling as their natural method of reproduction. It also makes all the woodland spirits goth-flavored, because that's my magical realm. Miasma is the literal blanket of darkness that smothers lands, installing an unsettling stillness and unnatural silence, depriving all things of their vibrancy and mirth. By making undead, you're not only spreading actual disease and sickness, but you're making the world actually and visibly worse, and it's good to enforce that. Because you're gonna run into nerds with smug anime avatars who'll tip their hat and say to you, Well, I'm gonna make a good necromancer, and he's going to automate farming and mining, and everyone will love my isekai power fantasy. So you have this necromancer who's going to prove everyone wrong, right? That undead could be used to grow food or mine ore. Well, the farm he has his skeletons working on has become foul and fertile. The land is now barren and a cloud of dark unease hangs over the entire area, tinging it in an out-of-season shade of visceral autumn. The mine fared even worse, if such a thing is even possible, as what cowers in the dark is nourished by the dark, and deep down there in the pit lied festering tangible evil beckoned by the walking dead. This is why undead are evil. It's not a cultural thing or a lack of respect for the dead, it's because they haunt stuff. I also think it's very important to give all undead a ravenous taste for flesh. Remember how I said undead don't need to eat? They don't. They, they don't. It doesn't go anywhere. Some of them don't even have stomachs. But they're compelled to. And the only thing they can taste, the only thing that can satisfy their undying hunger, is meat, flesh, blood. This is actually already a surprisingly common trope in fiction. Vampires suck the blood, zombies eat the, the brains, Frankenstein hated vegans, undead just love meat. But then you get into fantasy and it's like, what do you mean you're surprised the skeleton is trying to tear off and eat your skin? Skeletons are undead. Undead love eating meat. Give me your skin. If Mr. Bones catches you, you can be damn sure he's going to shred off chunks of your body and slap those cold cuts down his gutless gob till he's all good and slippery with gore. It's meat. It's poetic. Undead are inherently driven by nostalgia and loneliness. They find themselves subconsciously attracted to the warmth and viscera they once had in life. It's why the dumb ones can only think of tearing into people and eating their locally sourced meat, and why the smart ones constantly have this depressing sexual energy to them. So with all that in mind, here are some encounters or ideas I've used with the undead in the past that you guys might find useful. Undead don't need anything to survive, so feel free to put them in barrels, boxes, seal them up in caskets, and just forget about them. This gives you a great excuse to have a lot of enemies in an otherwise remote area that may have been sealed off for an extremely long length of time. If I'm feeling particularly mean, I like to combine this with flooded environments or put them in treasure chests. A timeless classic! How do you feel about undead in space? Because I hate them. If you're running a modern fantasy setting, undead in space can be an awful addition to any game. Space lich, space ghost, space zombie, or even space skeleton astronauts. Honestly, the concept of space ghosts genuinely personally terrifies me. Especially the shrieking, mad ghosts of lost cosmonauts who died by being accidentally flung outside of the Earth's orbit and left to drift in the cold, black expanse of open space. Depending on how your DM or setting of choice rules this, constructions might not recognize undead as entities to be concerned with. So you could make things miserable for your players battling something like a golem or a robot by introducing pre-packaged undead into the scenario at inconvenient times, of course. Want to hear something messed up? You can put undead inside undead. If a zombie's flesh is completely removed, it doesn't die, it just becomes a skeleton. Want to hear something more messed up? Go look up coffin birth. Think about that. 
Well, that just about covers the basics. We obviously can't get into everything in one video, but I hope I've given you enough to develop a few more wrinkles in your delicious spooky brain. Blah, blah, blah.